And my name is Glenn Hopman, and I'm working to produce a series called Dinner Party with History. And so how do you feel the conference has gone so far? What have you taken away from it? How do you feel the project might benefit from it? How the project, I mean, did, uh, the DPLA in general. DPLA in general. Uh, I can't imagine this could have gone any better than it has from my perspective. Um, as a member of one of the work streams on content, uh, I think that the discussions we had yesterday, um, the goals and objectives that the work stream was looking towards, um, all of our um, assumptions, if you will, and uh, interests were borne out in reality as a result of the conversations that have taken place here. So the, the planning, the, the thought, uh, I think has been beyond you know, what anybody could have expected, and I was very pleased. On a personal note, I'm finding that there are bits and pieces of technology and um, interest in different types of search that could help any number of different editorial projects that I'm aware of, and so I'm, I'm thrilled. I think it's been extremely beneficial. the most appropriate next steps for DPLA. Um, one in particular uh, that I've been given some thought to is a very broad-based public education program. Um, there's been some talk about marketing um, and public relations. It, this is a different dimension of marketing. This is, instead of the um, technology review uh, scientific American and uh, New Yorker, Parade Magazine, TV Guide, Popular Science um, have to be reached in terms of the types of readership, excuse my using the term types of readership, but the, the dimensions of readership are different. And for DPLA to have the impact across all the demographics um, and to benefit from the public interest that could excite interest on a broader basis in Congress or in other circles. We need to get as broad a constituency behind the increased digitization as possible. So that's one thing. What sort of outreach do you feel is necessary to accomplish that? Um, articles, demonstrations obviously but discussions as to you know how a digital public library uh, would benefit a broader constituency than than we're talking to here um, when Carnegie created the public libraries um, or not created them but contributed considerably to their growth um, it was an immediate mass population benefit my father used to go to the uh, public library on East Broadway in New York City, and he prided himself on having spent years there reading through as much of the bookshelves as he possibly could. Uh, for a person whose parents spoke you know, Yiddish and German and Russian, that was an amazing thing for him to be able to do. Getting the library to the broadest possible use as soon as possible uh, or its understanding is really critically important. What potential do you feel that a digital library has to replicate those sort of those experiences associated with the traditional physical library space? Well, I think you know, one shouldn't necessarily be looked at as doing away with the other. Um, the digital library provides an opportunity for embedded learning, um, learning on demand, um, creating broad contextual understandings, when you're in a public library, the digital library could be one of your finder aids who, uh, that can help you understand in, um, in deeper, broader terms, if you will, um, an, an idea that you're interested in or an emotion that you're exploring or an author's work and what the influences on her or him as a writer were. Um, so you get not an encyclopedic treatment, but a broad array. And given the types of tools that we're talking about, 
it could be from the music world, it could be from the art world, it could be any number of, it could be newspaper archives. I mean, so we're looking at an opportunity for on-demand contextual um, learning and reference that the best of librarians would have to work very hard to provide on, on their own.